I got this Sony portable radio cassette player and it doesn't give any sound. It's a Sony CFD S50. According to the owner, it doesn't give any sound. So let's check it out. I see there's a tuner. Let's see if it finds a station. It looks like it's tuning into some stations, but there's no sound at all. Nothing. Not even a hiss or something. Okay, so let's open it up and take a look inside. I guess one of these is the controller for the CD player and the other is the system controller. These look like audio processors and this I think this will be the output amplifier the audio amplifier gives out a lot of power and it needs a lot of power so it has wider strips to allow for more current but that's the first impression maybe I'm I'm wrong let's see what else we got Well, this is obviously the uh, power supply. Let's see if we can spot a problem right away. Is there a loose wire anywhere? Let's check some of the connections. Looking good. Let's check if we can see, spot any problems on the ICs. No, I don't see a problem right away. This is no quick fix, uh, guys. We have to dive into the main board. So I have to, to go to the internet and see if I can find an electronic diagram. So I can check the different components on the board, see which one are functioning and where the problem is. So... There was nothing on the Sony CFD S50, but it turns out the S50 is a minor upgrade to the CFD S05. And for that machine, there's an electronic diagram available. And I think it is probably, it's more or less the same uh, ICs. So let's uh, turn the machine on and see if these components are working okay. We can do that by tracing the audio signal coming in from the tuner, making its way across this board to the power amplifier. Uh, so in order to do that, I'll uh, turn on the machine. I turn it on through this digital multimeter because I want to keep track of the amps going into the machine. Uh, when I opened the case, I smelled a little bit of that. It's it's run, on some places. It's it probably runs hot, so maybe it draws more current than it should be. So perhaps there's a short somewhere. And to keep track of that, I use this amps uh, meter. I'll put it here so we can keep track of it. This is 10 milliamps. That's okay. In order to trace the audio signal on the printed circuit board, I have this uh, little gadget. It's an audio finder, I call it. I built this and if you would like to see how it works and maybe you want to build one your own, check out the video on this uh, channel uh, I put out earlier. So. So let's switch it on. All right, so this is where the signal from the radio receiver is processed. It's coming out here and it will go through this op amp, going to this audio processor, finding its way through here to the power amplifier, going out to the speakers. Let's turn it on. I let it find the station. Crank up the volume so we're sure we will hear a signal if it's there. This is where the FM antenna 
uh, is connected, the signal goes to this side of the receiver. So this is the input side of the receiver, this is the output side of the receiver. So we got an audio signal here, probably left channel, probably right channel. So the audio receiver is okay. Well, my guess is it goes through the op amp. Yes. Also doing great. Uh, probably comes somewhere in this audio processor. I have no idea at which pin that. Oh. So there is signal coming in, in the audio processor. There really is a smell of plastic melting. So maybe there's a short somewhere because you can smell there's something going on. But the amps are still at 20 milliamps, so that's nothing to worry about. If there's a short, it's not, not drawing very much current. So we're safe. So this is one of the channels going. And we are here at the power amplifier. And this is the, one of the pins of the power amplifier. This is probably the input. And there's nothing coming out of the power amplifier. So there's sound going into the power amplifier, but there is no sound coming out of it. According to the electronic diagram, this is the power amplifier in the electronic diagram. According to the electronic diagram, there is a power on off switch for the power amplifier. The first pin here is the uh, power supply for the IC, uh, but this pin over here is the power switch for the power amplifier. So this power amplifier can be switched on through this pin. So let's check the voltages if there is power going to this IC and if the switch for the power amplifier is turned on. So let's get my uh, voltmeter. Let's see if there's power at pin 12. Ten point five volts. So there's power going into the IC. Is the power amplifier turned on? There should be also somewhere around ten volts on this pin, but it is zero. So the switch for the power amplifier is not turned on. In an earlier project, I had the same problem. The pin that should switch on the power amplifier did not get its power. And the problem was a faulty capacitor. In this diagram, there's also a capacitor at this point. So maybe that's the problem here as well, a faulty capacitor. So maybe I should take out this capacitor and check if it's okay. What I also can do to check it is put some voltage on this pin and see if the power amplifier will turn on. So I'm going to connect the supply voltage to the power on off switch of the power amplifier. The power amplifier should turn on, so let's see if that's the case. Wow! See the amps going up? 170 amps. So maybe there's already some supply voltage on this pin, but there's a short going to ground and that could very well be that capacitor. If that capacitor has broken down and it has created a short between that pin and ground, the on-off switch of the power amplifier will never turn on again. 
And it also explains the plastic smell in this machine because the capacitor will turn hot if such a large current is going through it. So I'll have to take this one out and check if it's okay. Here we have it. 16 volts for 470 microfarad. Let's see what the component tester thinks of this component. Wow, it thinks it's a resistor with 0 0.02 ohms. Well, that's a short right there. So I think we, we've got the problem. It's this uh, capacitor uh, that's not doing its job. So let's see if I can switch it for a good one. Let's check out this one. Four eighty five. Right, this is the one. I got it out of another device, so these pins are a bit short. Let's see if it will fit. Um, all right. Let's turn the machine on and see what we've got. Power is on. Let's select tuner. Yeah, we got sound. Let's find a station. Yeah. So, the problem is solved. Let's put it back together again. So, so there you have it. If you like this video, please hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video.